Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me for Creator Talks. How you doing? I'm doing great and uh, excited to see that Cannibal is coming out as a trade paperback next week. Yeah, uh, crazy. <laughs> that is uh, going to be March 8th. Um, I know that fans of The Walking Dead and horror in general are going to really enjoy something like Cannibal. Why don't you, in your own words, just give me the pitch for Cannibal? Sure. I mean, Cannibal is about a small town uh, in uh, sort of Everglades, Florida, that is dealing with this uh, virus that uh, it's kind of a messed up virus where if you are uh, if you have it, it makes you crave human flesh. Uh, you're not a zombie, you're a regular person, but you're sort of overwhelmed with this uh, lust to eat humans. And uh, at some point, uh, almost like an addiction, uh, you lose control and you eat humans and uh, then feel really bad about it afterwards. So it's about a, it's a, about a town and a family dealing uh, with this sort of new world reality. But you don't lose your humanity, though. I mean, if you have the virus, you're fully aware of what you're doing. And you have remorse and guilt afterwards of having done it. Yeah, 100%. You're not a zombie on any level. You're a human being with a really unfortunate uh, virus. It's sort of a metaphor for um, sort of sexually transmitted diseases and the over-medicalization of society and uh, just a lot of uh, different things that uh, we tackle in today's world. I've heard it compared to The Walking Dead. Do you get tired of those comparisons? Because it really isn't. I mean, other than the fact that it's very character-driven, it's not on the same level at all. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it's a bit of a lazy comparison, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I almost feel like it's, it's closer to Bloodline uh, or um, um, even True Romance. I mean, True, uh, true Blood. Uh, I think it's closer to those two than it is Walking Dead. I mean, it's not apocalyptic. There's no zombies. Um, you know, there's no sort of faceless monster that's after you. It's really about people interacting and making really hard choices. Like, what would you do if your loved one had the virus? You know, would you help them feed? Would you disown them? Would you want to get away from them? Would you want to kill them? I mean, there there are a lot of hard choices that the characters. Uh, and the community have to make uh, because this is a reality. And so I don't think it's anything uh, like Walking Dead. I do love Walking Dead. I think it's a, it's a great comic. It's a great show. Um, but I think this is different. Very much so. I mean some of the townspeople, they have family members that uh, do have the virus and they try to protect them and help them find food. And others in the town of uh, Willow just want to go out and find them and eradicate them. Yeah, so um, that's kind of the world they live in. And Sheriff Mays, who's a character in the book, basically just doesn't get in anyone's way who wants to do that, who wants to eradicate them. He doesn't condone it, but he's not going to stop it. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of in a tough spot, and he does have his own agendas. So, um, you know, we really, you know, Jennifer, who is not here, unfortunately, because, uh, you know, she just got involved in something and she wasn't able to make this podcast. Uh, it was her original idea. Like, she's had this idea for a long time. And so it was important for her to uh, really uh, make this a grounded um, horror that was about people and about characters uh, and about about life. So it's not horror in like a gory, you know, slasher, blood and guts way. Uh, it's more of a foreboding sort of get under your skin, suspenseful type of horror. Yeah, I mean, there is some blood and guts and gore, but not an excessive amount. It's not the focus of the story. It's not the central point. Um, I mean, one of the things I found about it is um, if you took out that aspect of the virus and the cannibalism, there's still a very intense uh, character-driven story beneath that. You know, not, I mean, it makes it something special to have that being part of it. But even if you take that out, there's a, a really great story there already. I'm glad you think that because you know, to me that's the mark of, uh, of a good story is that if you can remove the genre element and still be interested – then I feel like you're doing something right, you know. And um, you know, it's described in Images Solicits as an anti-apocalypse story, and we know right now there's a bunch of apocalyptic stories out there, um, and some are really good. I enjoy a lot of them, um, and it's, it's become a genre in and of itself. Um, but why do you describe this as an anti-apocalypse story? Jen's the one who coined that phrase. Uh, I think for her, it was important that uh, humanity. It uh, doesn't give up and doesn't go gently into that good night. So for her, uh, it was a way of saying that 
uh, you know, people aren't going to give up their daily routines, you know, uh, just like with SARS or with, you know, even, uh, you know, a terrible disease like AIDS, like people aren't going to just suddenly, you know, change the way they do things and give up. I mean, they'll carry, a, like, if there's a cannibal virus and, and you're worried about people eating you, what are you going to do? You're going to carry a gun. You're going to be more suspicious of others. But you're going to go to work and you're going to go to the movies and you're going to go do your normal daily activities because humans are stubborn and uh, they've got more fight in them than to just let something like a, you know, a virus keep them from uh, their status quo. So I think that's what she means by that. Something else too. Um, the the background of this virus of these uh, mosquitoes that were uh, because of a storm awoken uh, that were dormant. Um, that doesn't take place within the pages of the comic book. That's just like the setup to the story. So you don't really don't spend any time on that at all. Uh, you just kind of lay the groundwork very quickly at the beginning of the book, but it doesn't take up any of the actual sequential art. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we really wanted to tell a story about this community in Everglades, Florida, which is, you know, an interesting backdrop with, and we all know lots of crazy things go on in Florida. Uh, you know, it's an open carry state. Um, you know, there's strange, you know, you know, there's alligators everywhere. There's, you know... It's a you know there's a lot of weird mixture between small communities, uh, bigger cities, and like this untamed you know swampland. So uh, we felt it was really ripe for uh, storytelling, and I didn't really want to waste time setting up um, you know the virus uh, coming into the world and how everyone reacts. Like we want to just plop you right into the middle of a world that you know this is the status quo, and while you know it's still pretty new to people. Um, it's still out there, and they know about it. Now, Jen grew up in that area. Is that why it's set in the Everglades? I mean, it's a creepy area in some places, the Swampland, but is that one of the reasons why? Was she that familiar with the area and with the people that it would made for a much more rich and deeper story? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in New York, so, you know, uh, the only alligators I ever heard of were, you know, in the sewer system. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, she definitely, you know, she knows it well. She, you know lived her childhood in Florida, calls it home. Uh, and so, you know, she definitely wanted, you know, you write what you know, right? So uh, it was an easy choice uh, for to set it in Florida. One of the things I really like about the story, and it's the hallmark of a very well-written story, it pulls me in because my connection to the community, it's not just a group of people that I'm observing, but there's a link, an emotional connection to the story through the Hanson family. Their relationship and, and Cash's relationship to his girlfriend Candy, all of that makes it very more much more um, personal. Oh, absolutely. And you know, they're, they're also they're flawed people. Like you know, when you know bad things happen, Cash doesn't react well, and we see sort of the the flawed you know his flawed way of dealing with things. Like I don't want to give away spoilers, mm -hmm. but you know he you know he doesn't necessarily do the right thing. You know, he, he reacts emotionally and there are consequences. Um, but, you know, we feel like he acts authentically to how, you know, somebody in his position might act. 